Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and we are ready for activity number eight in our Tetrix Prism programming guide. So uh, we've been through a lot of activities up to now, but we're ready. Actually, we're working with our TaskBot in our first TaskBot activity. We actually made our robot drive forward. But that's pretty boring. So now in this activity, we're actually going to add some turns into the mix. And we're going to start with a very simple turn. And we're going to make our robot drive in a circle. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right into that. What do we need? Well, obviously, we need to have our prism task spot uh, complete with our prism <laughs> mounted up and our charge battery ready to go. We need to have our USB cable and we need to have our computer. So, like we always do, we're going to start by opening the sketch. If we're in the Arduino software, we're going to File, we're going to Examples, Tetrix Prism, TaskBot, Activity 8, Drive in a Circle. So, once our software window actually comes up, we want to take a look at this sketch. I'm going to expand my window here so we can see everything that we need. And again, we've, we're becoming more comfortable in the sketch environment. Let's look at our comments at the top of the example. And we can see that based on the comments that the TaskBot is expected to drive in a continuous circle. And we will have to, unlike the first one where we didn't have to hit the red reset button, um, this is going to continue to loop until we actually press the, the red reset. So we haven't actually added anything new to this sketch. But hopefully, once you uh, execute this, you're going to understand, have a better understanding of how two motors, when they're mounted in this kind of con um, configuration back to back, and we've employed that prism set motor invert command, and we're actually giving them a similar command. We want you to really kind of use this as an activity to help understand how that is going to make your robot work uh, in a more comprehensive type of a, a fashion for you and you understand how the motors work together and when you take that knowledge into your own custom robots you're going to be able to be successful with that so that's what this application or actually activity is all about so we've got our set motor invert command <laughs> we only need to call that one time and this is probably one of the simplest programs you're going to see is basically we just need to use a prism set motor powers we want to talk to both motors at once but you'll notice in our variables we're actually giving them two different values. And if you think about that, what's going to happen when we do that? If we give one motor one speed and then the other motor a different speed, instead of a straightforward behavior, we should get a circle. So let's go ahead and upload this to our robot and see actually what happens. So I'm going to connect my cable to my computer. I'm going to make my connection to my task spot. I'm going to power it on. Check and make sure I've got the lights that tell me everything is okay. I've got my blue power light, got my solid green light there. I'm going to go into my software window. I'm going to start by verifying my code. It's good general practice just kind of do that, just to make sure that before you actually try and upload whether or not you've got any error messages. And then I'm going to, once that's done, everything's okay, I'm going to hit upload. Should see some data lights. And once that is done, as long as I've got my green light there, I'm ready to go. So again, not enough space here on the table, so we're going to have to set this down on the floor. I'm going to disconnect my power there. I'm ready to set this down on the floor and see what it does. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, now that we're back and we've seen what the, the, the behavior is, is actually done, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. We were able to, in our program, we were able to give the, the two different motors two different values. And by varying the, pa the power uh, to the different motors, they're going at different speeds, they're traveling different distances, right? Because we talked about in the first one, if we give them a constant, um, constant speed and that's going to impact the distance they travel. So when two different wheels are traveling at two different distance, that means we're actually going to define a circle or an arc. So 
Let's play with that a little bit. You can change your values, see what kind of an impact it makes to the size of the circle, the diameter of the distance traveled. That's what we really want you to get out of this activity is how uh, when you the change the different commands and that, how it impacts the behavior that you physically see on your robot. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about um, real world connections. Obviously, we talked about how different types of uh, devices have to be able to move forward, but uh, in addition to that, they have to be able to turn, right? This is a fundamental turn that they have to um, be able to do. So not only physical devices like mobile cars, trains, and things like that uh, have to be able to drive in circles, but devices like maybe um, an irrigation system. If you're uh, from the, the Midwest and you're in a farming country, you uh, are flying over fi a farm country, you might have seen a uh, crop the circles where it's irrigated in a circular pattern. Um, so that's kind of the type of, an, of a device that might use this kind of a basic behavior. Stem extensions, there's lots of different stem extensions that we could talk about if you want to. In science, we could talk about circular motion, um, tangent type motion. Uh, in technology, motor control and precision, problem solving versus coding. Engineering. What's it really take to engineer a mechanical design that can actually follow a geometric path? And then math, oh gosh, all kinds of math type of connections where you can <laughs> talk about, excuse me, <coughs> talk about um, the definitions of a circle, arc lengths of arcs, determining radiuses, all kinds of things for that. So from there, uh, how do we hack this code? That's the next activity, right? Well, again, Using this as an example, try and recreate this from scratch. Practice that syntax. Uh, see if you can make this um, f from the beginning. Change the codes a little bit, the, the parameters of the, the function on uh, set motor powers. See if you can make uh, the circle larger, make it smaller. What would it take to actually add a different behavior? Well, that, we had this, the forward behavior before, so if you had a, a half arc on one side, and maybe a couple of straights in between. Maybe you could define an oval or maybe a figure eight. So that's the type of thing that maybe you want to actually explore and see if you really understand how these motors are working together. So I hope you found that inspirational, informational, and like we always say, go out there, have some fun, build some robots, come back and see us again.